Hi and welcome. Uh, we're going to trace a system call from user space to kernel space and back. Uh, we started our operating system in an emulator called QMU. Now we are in GDB and we're adding debugging information for a user level program LS. Now we're setting a breakpoint in the main function of LS. And then we're waiting for the computer to start up and then we top, type LS and there's no output because we just hit the breakpoint. Now we're stepping line by line, and now we're going into the else function. And the system call we're going to trace is called fstat, which gets information about a file. So I'm going to step into that. And here you see this is the last part of the user space. Uh, so we came from a main to ls to fstat in this little file. And here you can see that we are navigating the stack frames just to see where we came from if we get confused about where we are. We're going. So here I'm inspecting what's on the stack. And uh, you'll see soon, because we are just about to move to kernel space. Let's see. So these are the upcoming instructions. And uh, that's the return address, 62A. So that's what we're going to return once we're down from kernel space. And uh, this is special instruction, uh, int. So, oh, first I'm talking about this, let's see. So here you see that's 8 is put in the register EAX. Uh, and 8 corresponds to the system call that we're making, fstat. So I'm just showing you how you would find that. So you can see that the sysfstat is just a number. So the kernel knows what which system call it wants to execute. And here you see, so int is an interrupt, and there's a special uh, instruction and it ensures isolation between kernel and user space. And the uh, serif 40 in hexadecimal is 64, and that's one of many arguments to an interrupt. An interrupt could be a system call most commonly, but something like uh, pressing the a keyboard or anything else where you have to interrupt the normal flow. So here you can see the different types of interrupts. And there is our system, the fact that it's a system call that's being made. So you see here, now we just stepped into, uh, into kernel space. And the way you can see that is because it says Cirex 8, the whole part I'm highlighting there. Um, and 8, that's basically it's high addresses, so that's where our kernel lives. Uh, so now it looks like we're in kind of no man's land. And here you see, so on the stack, we see that 62A is on our stack. But we can switch, so we switch to another symbol file that has other debug information, and now we are in the in kernel space. Um, and uh, yeah, we're building a trap frame that's sort of keeping track of all the state that we have in the for the registers. And then, yeah, I'm not going to explain all of this, but this is sort of where the kernel, the entry point for a system call in the kernel. And here you see the trap frame, and you can see the state that's been saved here. EX, for example, 8, that's the fact that it's a fstat system call, and trap number 64. Uh, which is that the fact that it is a system call. And here you can see something interesting. It's a bit hard to see, but instruction pointer EIP 1578, uh, it's printing in decimal for some reason, but if we look at it as an address, which I'm about to do right here, you see that it is 62A, and that's the instruction pointer where we are jumping to when we return from kernel space to user space. So that state is saved here. And here I'm showing you that that was on the stack before as the return address. It's just dispatching depending on what type of interrupt it is. And then we get into generic system call function handler. And this is just a table um, from I mean, depending on what type of, type of system call it is, it calls it calls a function, uh, which is like the actual implementation of that system call. And since we are in kernel space, we can sort of we can we can sort of uh, keep track of the arguments, or well, not keep track. We can um, ensure that the arguments are 
in fact uh, valid and that the user hasn't isn't trying to do something that it's not allowed to do. And here's a sort of way that we check the arguments uh, and then files that is what actual we actually get the information about the files and we're gonna skip over parts of that but because it has more to do with the file system but you can sort of get a feeling for how these things uh, might be implemented. So you can see I'm printing the file object and the stat object and that's the things that we will return. So we actually get information about files when we're typing ls. And that's a, as deep inside the kernel as we'll go and now you can see yeah, you can see what's on the stack, where we came from. Uh, it's all traps, traps, and system, syscall and sysfstat. And now we're sort of stepping up again, going back, returning, until we finally return to user space. That's the second address, so we call the trap, trap and then the return is the next instruction. So now we're sort of cleaning up the stack. Um, and here's the <coughs> IRET, and that's the um, opposite of int. So it's returning from interrupt, right? So similar to the return instruction in a normal user space. You can see we're still in kernel space because there's zero x8, but now everything that's on the stack are addresses that are in user space. So this is the point where we switch back. Season two a, if you recall that from being where we returned to. Now switching debug information to ls, the user program. And now you see uh, the stack, the user stack that we had before. So now you can see we're almost done and we're just about to print the actual output of ls using some buffer where the information is stored about files. You see it's just about to close the file descriptor but we got all the input printed. And now if we go through the instruction we found done and we get control in shell again. So I hope you thought that little demonstration was uh, interesting. And uh, thank you for watching. Or thank you for the watch, it says there. Uh, bye.